Welcome back. My name is John Cohen, photographer from Toronto, Canada. Today we're going to do a quick little video on how I make HDR photos. I've been asked by a lot of people to show a quick demo. So here we are in Lightroom and we're going to do a very, very quick, simple, easy demo using the Nick HDR Effects Pro software, the software that I love to use. We'll go into that in just one sec. Before we start, here's the three images that we're going to work with different exposures. As you can see, I did this without a tripod. And in fact, this photo was taken through the window at a building I was standing in. Just liked how it looked. I liked this building. And um, the first thing I always like to tell people for these images is make sure you turn your sharpening down. Too many times people will sharpen and then sharpen above sharpening once they bring it into the HDR software. Take the sharpening to zero as a starting point for you. Remember, what I always say is take the sharpening to zero and your HDRs will be a hero. So let's go ahead and export that out. And we're gonna use the HDR Effects Pro, like I said. The software gives me the most creativity and the most ability to let my HDR images pop. So it's loading up. The first thing that you really wanna do is bring it to full screen, which I've done. Ghosting and alignment is built into this software. In this case, we don't need to do any worry about ghost reduction. Alignment, the software has already done it automatically, as you can see. Even though I handheld it, it did it perfectly and adjusted it perfectly. In case you're not familiar with the uh, HDRFX Pro software, I'm gonna just quickly go over a couple basics. On the left-hand side, you have all these presets. There's uh, about 30 of them or so that come right out of the box. Some that are really great for uh, photos, some that are probably not the right choice for your photo. And then you can also do customs, download customs, or actually make your own customs, which is always a fun thing to do. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the basic realistic balanced. So let's go ahead and hide those presets for now because we're gonna work from this image. By clicking on preview up here on the top, I'm letting that load for a sec. You can see the before and after, and I haven't done a thing yet. The software did all the thinking for me so far. So here's where we start working as, uh, as photographers, as artists, and figure out what we like. Tonal compression, if you bring it all the way to the right, you're gonna make this image look a little bit more painterly-like. If you bring it all the way to the left, let's bring it all the way to the left, it's going to look blown out. Your highlights are uh, definitely going to uh, overkill your shadows. And uh, it doesn't look like anything special. What I like to do is I like to go somewhere in between 18 and 20%. To me, that's a good starting point. You can always go back and adjust it more after you've done the rest of the adjustments. Looking here at the global adjustments, you got exposure, contrast, saturation structure, and then your blacks and whites and your temperature. I always like to bring my structure down to about 5% to start with. I like to do selective structure adding instead of letting it do globally. That's just my way. Everyone has a different feel, uh, feeling for how they like to do that. So we're going to go ahead and adjust this uh, image just a little bit. I'm going to darken it down a little because I want it to feel like there's that storm coming over the sky here. This cool September day. I'm going to bring the contrast up. I'm going to bring the saturation up. And the blacks and the whites for me essentially look good. Here we have HDR methods. HDR methods for the most part are basically the way that this software stands out from everyone else. These methods that they offer, that Nick offers, is amazing. There's so many choice and so many options and from each of these options you can actually go ahead and even add more differences by adding the method strength to be higher or by making the method strength to be weaker. For this image, I'm gonna do something about, um, let's pick sharp. And I'm gonna sharpen to about 20 or so percent, 25 maybe. That to me looks great. So once I've done the global adjustments, I'm gonna pop into the selective adjustments. Because HDR images, things that are light or white tend to get a little gray or dingy looking. I like to always bring my whites back you know, it doesn't have to be a much of a difference, a little bit. 
And then I also like to bring the structure into these buildings. That's for sure where structure is needed. So we look at before and after. So there's the building before, there's the building after. You can see the difference right away. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, let's duplicate that structure over here. So it balances, we're gonna put a little more structure over here and a little structure here. So all these things where the building would be affected. Um, really that's all I need to do for structure. Next we're gonna go ahead and add some structure into this cloud. I love clouds. Clouds to me deserve structure. They should be really defined and they should show and I really want to make those clouds look like it's dark and, and that storm is approaching. Let's build that outwards. Yeah, that's what I like to see. That's the look I'm feeling. And there you go. So very quickly, we've made this image from here to there. Now, there are finishing options that you can choose. In this case, we're not going to do any of them. Um, stuff like vignetting or adjusting the tonal curve. Um, for me, I like to do this in a second phase, which I'm going to do in another video for you. So let's click save. Let's bring it back into Lightroom. And let's take a look at the final images before and after. So there's our before, there's our after. Whoops, there's our before. And there's our after. Before, after, before, after. You know, a real difference you can see, uh, especially with the clouds. So again, my name is John Cohen. I hope this helps. Uh, and please stay tuned for the second video in this, uh, in this image. And we're going to finish making this image stand out even more. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and uh, look back at other videos to see if there's anything else you can learn. Take care.